Hello everyone, welcome to another Quant Element Method tutorial. Today we're going to do a training on interaction. We mainly focus on tied and coupling and how do we apply this in the fine element, <clears throat> in our fine element simulation. Let's see the problem statement. We have a joint structure, the left hand side and right hand side here. And the two shafts is going to be joined by a cross element. <clears throat> and we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to fix or ping the left hand side or the hole using, uh, using the bolt, but we are going to use directly boundary condition to simulate the bolt. And on the right hand side, we're going to apply the torque, which is one Newton's meters. So let's see how do we do this analysis. So as usual, first we set a working directory to the file to the direction you want. And now we can input the part, import the part. In the part, right click import and then here we have a step file. Once you build the CAD <clears throat> model, you can output the assembly as a step file. And it can be imported into the abacus. Well, this assembly, we have a lot of parts, but since we're not using both in this, uh, analysis, we are only going to use the first one, second one, and the third one. So we can hold shift and delete all the part from four to nine. Now we create a material property. So all material is made of aluminum. And choose mechanical elastic property. Aluminum in SI unit, the Young's modulus is 67.9 E9, while the Poisson's ratio is 0.3. Now we need to assign the, create a section, aluminum section. Solid homogeneous consists for a 3D model. Now we need to assign the material to all parts first. Uh, to part one, so this one, uh, we assign that. We don't need to create set. And for part two, for part three, make sure all your parts is in the color of green, which means the material property is successfully assigned it to the part. Now we create the sampling in the simulation, holding shift and select all of them. Since this is building uh, the CAD tools, this is already assembled and we use independent here. So the, although the shape is constrained, but you need to understand that the, there's no actual interaction between different parts. So for example, if you fix this end and apply the load at this end, it will not be constrained by the joints in the middle. So this end will move to the right, causing the diverge, divergence of the solution. So what we need to do is we need to give uh, interaction between different parts in abacus so that they will, they can interact with each other. So first we create a step since this is a static problem, static general. And leave everything default. And then we create interaction. So for interaction, we choose the constraints here. 
And we're going to create a tight constraint. For tight constraint, it means all the nodes on the on the surface is going to be joined together. It's like all the nodes is glued together. So whatever deformations happens for one for part A, it will also happen for part B. And the advantage for that is very easy to control. The disadvantage is it cannot really simulate the real geometry, including friction, sliding, and all other things. <clears throat> so in this problem, since our load is uh, our load is very small, it's only one Newton meters. So we can use tight for this problem. And to apply the tight, we use this torus. Select the right hand side, use this remove tour. So it will only show you, it will hide the uh, right hand side and only show you the joint. Now we create a tight for tight one and choose tight here. And the master surface, we use this invert this play to control. The master surface is the surface that apply load to it. So we, we are going to apply load on the right hand side. So this is the master surface. So we are going to choose, oh, sorry. We are going to choose all the inner surface for the part. Hold shift to select all the, all the surface you need. Once it's done, we need to choose the slate surface, which is the surface that that, it, that connect to this master surface. So we use the invert and choose the surface that is connected to that, holding shift and select all the surface. But notice that not all the surface is going to attach to the master surface. So there are some surface that is not really <clears throat> having any interaction with the master surface. It will, show, it will be shown in the warning when you apply the analysis. Now, once everything done, we can choose a just slave surface to initial position, which means they will not interact, uh, they will not overlap with each other and tie the rotational degrees of freedom too as well. Once it's done, let's create this, use this tools to show all the structure. Now we're going to create another tied element for the left hand part, create tie two. So, uh, sorry, before we create, we hide this part. And Choose a surface in a surface for this part, and then choose the surface that is in contact with the master surface. And now, now the two parts will have some interaction between each other by the joint in the middle. <clears throat> so now we need to apply the torque to the structure because we cannot directly apply the moment to the triangular element we are going to use the constraint to apply that. So first we create a reference point. This reference point is a point that doesn't have mass, but you can apply load or any force on, on it. So we create reference point at the center of the right-hand side. And we are going to use the couple, coupling for this one. Uh, 
choose the reference point as the represented point and then choose the surface. To choose a surface, we select the outer surface. So this reference point will be coupled to the entire outer surface of the right-hand side, representing a torque applied to the right-hand side. <clears throat> and we choose kinematic uh, coupling. Kinematic coupling means you can consider kinematic coupling as there are several bars, like uh, rigid body bars connecting the reference point to all the surfaces, all the nodes on the surface. And later we're going to apply moments on this reference point. So it will, uh, it will be distributed to the entire surface. Now we apply load. First, we create a boundary condition to the initials and call it pin. So for this one, we select all the holes on the right-hand side. Sorry. Uh, you can choose Surf, uh, you can so all the surfaces for the hold is true, is has been chosen, and we choose pin, so it'll be it will be pinned, and then we apply load. Here we are going to apply load a moment to the reference point. This moment is a torque, so the moment direction should be pointing to the positive x direction. And the value for that will be one. <clears throat> now we're going to do the mesh. For this problem, <clears throat> since the geometry for the outside or the, for the left hand side and right hand side is pretty large, and the stress will definitely be concentrated in the center part. So we are going to mesh, separately mesh the center part and the <clears throat> outside the part, outside part. The center part will be mesh way finer than uh, outside the center. So to do that, we need to partition the assembling first. So go back to assembly. We are going to partition somewhere here and somewhere here by using a data plane. So, <clears throat> We can choose this one. That one plane created from offset from the principal plane. Your principal plane is showing here, YZ plane. And enter a value that is uh, some, somewhere between the middle and the right-hand side. So what we can do is we can test the distance, use tours, query, and test the distance between the principal plane and the, and the start point of the joint. You can see in X direction is 105. So we create a plane that offset from this plane by a distance of 100. On the other hand, Measuring this one, this is 167. So we will create a plane that offset from the principal plane by 170. So <clears throat> so now we select this and choose the YZ plane. 
and put minus 100 here because we're going to move to the minus x direction. And you can see that this is very close to the middle, to the joint, but it's not exactly at the joint. And to view it better, we can choose view and then choose parallel. Now you can see that where the cut is. Create another uh, YZ plane and choose minus 170 here. <clears throat> And what inside this will be meshed way finer than outside. We can move this one a little bit further from, uh, from the center part. So we create another YZ, put minus 175 here. And we can, in the assembly and features, we can delete the datum plane that we don't need, which is datum plane two. Now we are going to partition the assembly by this two data plane using this tool, partition cells, and select the cells, entire cells, and, <clears throat> sorry, uh, long click this tools and select the second one Partition cells using data plane. Select the cells you want to partition and then select the data plane. Create partition. And again, select the cells and then select the data plane and then create partition. Now you can see that the cells is partitioned in the middle. You can it include the left hand part the middle part and the right hand part. Now we can go back to the mesh. Here, because the geometry is kind of complicated, we're going to use a triangular element for that. Using the mesh control and choose the tag here and use free. And in the element type, we choose linear instead of quadratic just to save the save the calculation power. And now we can assign seed. We choose this age seeding age instead of giving a global seed and use x y tools to show the front view for the geometry and choose all the line on the left-hand side. Holding shift, choosing all the line at the right-hand side. And then assign a relatively large element size to it. So this is pretty coarse. Now we are going to choose everything in the middle. Hold shift and select everything in the middle. And sorry, using this tools. Click this tools first and hold shift to select everything in the middle and then hold control to deselect the extra lines that you don't want, which is on the left hand side and right hand side. So what you should include it, including what what you should include it in this <clears throat> selection should have this line and everything in the middle in and this line also. Now select down. Instead of 10, let's make it <clears throat> two. Or even we can make it even finer, 1.5. Now we can build a mesh. Select the entire thing and then click down. You can see that Outside the center part is pretty coarse and inside is very fine. If you wanted to, if you, if <clears throat> a, so, a hundred thousand elements is too much for you, you can make the, make the seed coarser. 
for, uh, instead of 1.5, probably make it two. So this can save some of your calculation power. <clears throat> it drops from 100,000 to 49,000. Now we can create a job, leave everything default and submit. There will be warning pop up because as we discussed before, some elements is, uh, in the tight constraint is not contact in contact with the master surface. So it will show things like this. And also we choose to adjust the, adjust the degrees of freedoms, <clears throat> posi initial positions. So there will be some warnings showing up and the analysis is done now. So what we apply here is a counterclockwise moment. If you think about the center joint, uh, this part uh, will be in tension and this part will be in compression. And now we can see how does it look like. Uh, by choosing this one, showing the contour plot, and then using the maximum principle, principle stress. <clears throat> now uh, you can see that the stress for the right side and left hand side is not very large. The stress will be concentrated in the joint and the largest stress will be on the center part. So we can hide, here we choose instant and we hide the left hand side and right hand side. As we discussed, since this is a counter, uh, if you see from this side, it's a counterclockwise torque. So this corner also as long as this corner will be in tension while this corner together with this corner will be in compression. And the stress concentration will be at, a, at exactly at the turning point for the joint. This is how we do using tide and uh, uh, and the constraints coupling to do a joint problem <clears throat> in Abacus. Hope that this video can help you and thank you for listening. <clears throat>